change things a little. Okay? This is it. No more introductions. Sharon. The first thing I would like to do is to thank you, Alexander, for allowing us to come here. This is a real honor for us because we have known that we were going to be coming to your country and we wanted very much to speak with people at all levels, particularly youth. And in our country, we also like to speak with our youth because we feel like that you are the future for us. Because our ages, somehow or another, have not been able to do the right things by our populations, or at least ours. And we don't, we leave that to you to think about whatever is going on here. But nonetheless, we are really, really interested in getting a sense of who you are what your sense of the future is, how we, even my and the older generation of mine, how we can work with you to create a safer and, and healthier and a better world. And uh, so far, we're just starting on this trip. We here in Moscow. Next, we go to Volgograd. Uh, we will be seeing some young people there, and then after that, you can return yeah, girls, and then we will leave through Saint Petersburg. Uh, so hopefully during this time we will have an opportunity to speak with others of your age group. But um, also I want to acknowledge Galina uh, Suzuba, who's back in the back. We have known Galina is Russian and we have known each other for 32 years. Is that correct? Yes. When I met her, she was your age. And <laughs> now we're both a little older. <laughs> And then our delegation comes from 15 different states in the United States. We didn't, we, most of us did not know each other when we met at the airport. Uh, but one thing we knew for sure, we're all interested in trying to find ways to build, rebuild the relationship between our two countries. I'm delighted to be here because I like Sharon's idea. We don't want to be so stupid as to have another world war. We want to have peace because we know each other. Thank you. My name is Howard Mitty. I'm a professor of chemistry from Youngstown, Ohio, midway between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Um, I just retired. I worked almost 50 years doing that job and started in the Cold War and was delighted when Russia and America could come together after the Cold War with the collapse of the Berlin Wall. And uh, it was an opportunity for our two countries to finally come together after being uh, at sword point to each other for probably 50 years. And uh, now we're going apart from each other again and it's very disturbing uh, to us to see the opportunity slip away. And we would like to do what we can do to try and put things together to learn more about why this happened. Because we don't want to see it happen again. We've got to put it back together somehow with your help. Thank you. So students, what do you think? Do you have any uh, feelings of conflicts or, uh, I don't know, Cold War-like feeling? So I would start with the political conflict, which is the most obvious, like it's on the top. Uh, we have the clash between over Ukraine, over Crimea, and all many other topics like Georgia. So it's the most obvious and probably the one we cannot directly uh, Make an impact on. So, but another uh, another problem between the United States and Russia is misperception that people have of each other. Uh, I can honestly say that in Russian, uh, in the Russian society, in the Russian youth society, uh, there is some because I once had a talk with my friends, and they gave a really interesting answer to me why they don't like the United States because they want to conquer the world. So, and it really exists, so uh, I asked them why did they think so? Well, we heard it on the TV, just looking at uh, their like, political affairs with other countries. Uh, 
then I went to the United States and I found out they uh, that well they don't want to conquer. So I have a lot of a lot of American fans who don't want to conquer the world, which is uh, quite quite strange. According to our media, they do. So I think uh, this problem is possible to overcome uh, because we can just bring other students and just show that there is no um, aggression between the two countries, I mean, between the people, between the living people, the human beings. So I think the problem of misperception is really serious, and that's where it all starts. <laughs> what do you think, you could see in that? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of work and now... Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, about the conflict. Yeah, I totally agree with Yeni about uh, the differences uh, between our uh, two sides. That we don't, we have a lot of in common in cultural things, in cultural uh, diversity. So, uh, yeah, I was uh, with, uh, I was a part of the group that visited Tufts University uh, this uh, during uh, this forum uh, in Boston. Uh, so. It actually was my first time in America and uh, it was quite a shock <laughs> for me to see how much similar Boston to my hometown. So actually I'm from Moscow. <laughs> so that, yes, uh, maybe uh, I had a lot of uh, uh, stereotypes about America because I expected uh, some kind of uh, the main street of New York from some kind of pictures and here's Boston. It's totally perfect city for me. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. Uh, and it was quite different from what I expected. Uh, but uh, these similarities uh, put me uh, in position of uh, not uh, some kind of visitor, but uh, some kind of just a person, just uh, uh, who who was a part of it, part of the city, as maybe not as a citizen, but uh, as a uh, person who understand everyone who is walking around, or just to uh, I don't know, talking in the cafes, bars. <coughs> So, uh, political situation is quite different because my personal uh, opinion about all of this is that uh, uh, a lot of people just uh, can't see all uh, uh, parts of this situation at all. So, uh, maybe they have uh, some other questions, some other, dis other disagreements and we just don't see them. Uh, maybe they are uh, part of a much bigger part of this conflict that everyone can expect. So, it's just my personal opinion. Uh, and uh, as a study abroad coordinator, it's uh, really something that uh, uh, I don't, wouldn't want to uh, have influence on our relationship uh, between, uh, I don't know, between universities, between just people. Uh, political conflict is uh, complicated. Yeah. And uh, actually, on this case, I would like to, uh, to see, to understand the opinion of people who are in charge of all of this. And maybe make my own opinion and uh, give uh, our students and professors uh, opportunity to make their own opinion after they he uh, hear all of uh, uh, opinions from uh, different sides of this conflict. So, yeah. So, uh, the problem is so what's the problem? Are you saying there is none? We have one political science specialist, so he is as the final... Okay, we have uh, someone coming up to the plate here, okay. Only a few more But, uh, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you ask, uh, my, vision, my vision for this is that we are not separating the politics and... Sorry, uh, my vision on this issue is uh, that we are not separating the politics and politician and the degree, the education system. It's uh, two completely different parts of the system. When we're talking about uh, cultural exchange, uh, degree education exchange, it means that uh, we are given opportunity for new generation, for new students to see, to talk each other and to walk uh, through this issue by 
just um, not war solutions, but by communication. If we are talking about politics and politicians, it's their own decision and it's the government decision what to do. But on our level at Presidential Academy, we're trying to maybe not separate, but to distance from it. Because our first, uh, uh, first way is to educate people. Not to give them politician view, but to give them knowledge about how the world works, how the management works, how marketing works. So uh, if we're talking about cultural exchange program, it's a good, perfect way to see another country, to understand their cultural maybe <coughs> efforts. And uh, I think that we should not mention politics here, because it's uh, is my only opinion, it spoils a lot. Because if, when we are mentioning politicians and politics, it always gives us uh, um, a feeling that we have, we were, um, I don't know, like fighting each other. But in this room, we are talking about uh, peace. So, uh, for example, I have a business card of Women, Women International League for Peace and Freedom. <laughs> I suppose the peace and freedom is a good, maybe, logo for this meeting. But that was my opinion. Well, let me share my own experience. 22 years ago, I went to the United States for the first time in my life. And I had a wonderful opportunity to stay with an American family for a week. It co completely changed my mind. It completely changed my understanding of the United States. It's kind of a very simple thing. A young person goes and stays for a few days with an American family. He goes to, to, to eat in a local restaurant. He, he goes to movies, he has, well, any kind of very simple things. But it really helps to understand how you guys are similar, how you think, what you think about us, what we think about you. It, it can be a tremendous thing for any of our uh, uh, Ru Russian students. And the other thing, it's true, there is a lot of propaganda about the United States willing to conquer Russia, uh, to attack Russia, and things like that. And I'm always telling to my students, it's stupid, don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And for them not to believe it, I suggest you should go to Manhattan. You should visit New York for two days and walk along Manhattan and see this wonderful industrial power and understand that Americans don't want a war. They want to build more... more uh, <laughs> yeah, but they want to live peacefully, do the, the things they do, and they don't want to have a war with Russia. So a simple thing like a visit to New York for a few days can change uh, people completely. So, well, of course they cost money, but those are not so huge monies like host a Russian person for, for a few days or and visit with him Manhattan. Very simple things. But if you can help us to an extent, to a few students of ours, it can help those few students and through them it will continue. Tell me, do you trust uh, you, you, uh, what, Western Ukraine, Kiev, do you trust their newspapers? No, not at all. Okay, and do you trust the Donbass newspapers? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you trust Russian TV? No, <laughs> frankly speaking, uh, maybe eight or nine years, I'm not watching TV at all. Uh -huh. But what about, what about print media? Do so, if I want to get some information, I try to, I, I search it in US media, mass media, Russian, Ukrainian, and also I have a lot of friends which are working with public policy in Ukraine. So I used to trust them, but sometimes you never know where is uh, a reality, where is uh, objective. So they can tell me what they saw, but through their mind and, and their eyes. So we still live in different countries, so maybe I have another background, uh, maybe they have another, they have more experience in public policy. So that's why I used to, tr to trust them, but I'm not, um, I'm not take their uh, information as truth, as totally truth. Because for now, nobody knows what, where, where is this line between truth and do you all take any, of the, or do you look at any of the news services here in Russia that are being done by Americans? For no. instance, Russia and Saturn. No. You don't do that, so you don't trust that either. Like, I'm not, uh, you it's know, not like, so well known. It's not yeah. so well known. It's not so well known, and also, if I really need something, 
I'll search it. But usually I try not to be involved in all of these problems in society. You know, it's it's my position. Student, too. You have to do your work as a student too. Well, we have some more Russian students uh, who didn't say anything about what, how they see their future. Ladies, девушки, скажите, как вы видите свое будущее? So my idea is simple. Um, A little louder, please. Uh, okay, my idea is simple, and I I want to see uh, the future in which I can uh, use all my opportunities in, uh, to, to see where I want to see, to travel in country for which I want to travel and um, I think now uh, I think it's a, a huge problem uh, for students to, uh, to do what they really want uh, without any help and um, in education, actually, we have a lot of problem because my mother is a, ch is a teacher and um, she sees that uh, many people uh, don't, don't, doesn't know what they actually want and I want to see the future when uh, young people uh, will have opportunity to see more, to learn more. So. It's really simple. <laughs> yes. You're right. Thank you. Anybody else? I think one of the things that we talk about is this sense of powerlessness and changing politicians' behavior, and that that we can't we can't affect that effectively. And really, the only way to do that, and it's what you spoke about earlier, is having the citizenry care about each other. And the the only way that that happens is this getting people together. And as the politicians are influenced by the fact that we love Russians and we have relationships with Russians and they matter to us. They're not this, this place on a map that we don't understand very well. That as our politicians understand that, then their discussion changes a bit. And that's the, really the only thing that will change, that we have the power to change. Uh, there, there are people and forces that we don't have the power to change and many of those are quite frankly evil things and there are people who crave power and lives don't matter to them mm -hmm. but but once we can express in a really clear and powerful way that your lives matter to us and that our politicians understand that that is profound and one of the ways that, that happens I think one of the reasons you have so many students from BYU is I bet most of them have lived here before and That's so right. they, right. they come to love the country and they want to study. And so if you want someone to study Russian, or they, they need to come here. And even if it's for a week or a couple of weeks, it's, it, it's that. That's the only thing that we, at, you know, me as a little person, have the power to control is come to my home. And we'll come to your home. And, and that, will, that will be the only thing, I think, that influences it.